because maybe you want to snuggle up next to someone and share some nice audio. Folks at Sony sent this my way for me to take on a test drive, share my thoughts. This is the AX7 portable theater system. I really want to thank Sony for sending this and I've only had it for a couple days. I have a lot of thoughts, but this isn't going to be one of my normal like scripted long-term reviews talking about all the performance and metrics. It's going to be a bit more rambly and off the cuff as I share just some early experiences getting this thing out of the box, getting it set up. This is a very unique proposition. We're trying to design something that looks a little nicer in your home and can deliver a spatial audio bubble wirelessly and portably. So you can take it to wherever you want that theater experience, but it's not necessarily a solution that's always going to live in one spot. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. I do want to talk about just some of the initial experience getting this thing in house. And I, I have to throw another shout out to Sony packaging. This is something that we saw recently with the Xperia 1 Mark V, their move to more sustainable cardboard and paper packaging. And this looks and feels so nice when you get this container and it's a different kind of matte and paper finish. This thing is not cheap and it's not packaged or presented as a cheap wireless solution. Okay, but we can kind of just move this over here to the side and we can focus a little bit more on the AX7. This is a multi-channel Bluetooth audio solution. The main base, this housing here, has a pair of front firing speakers with these sort of resonance chambers for low frequency and, and bass rumble. And then there's a pair of wireless satellites. It's hefty. Though the home speaker unit here is, is weighted down nicely. It's not going to sort of like vibrate or rumble, rumble around on a table, but it's not so heavy that you, you wouldn't feel like you could pack this and take it somewhere else. Like you could put this in a suitcase. I like the fabric covered design and aesthetic. It reminds me of some of the better audio experiments that we've seen from Google recently, but it's a Sony product. So we are talking about some of those bleeding edge technologies in wireless connectivity and satellite speakers that balance themselves when you're within a certain envelope up when you're creating a bubble of a certain distance. Sony rating this at its best for a single user in sort of like a sort of a 1 to 1.3 meter distance from the satellites to the user creating kind of an a tight little audio triangle, but I found really good experiences kind of pacing this out even a little bit further. The main unit connects to your phone over Bluetooth 5.2 and then Sony uses what they call monopole synthesis. It, what I wordily described as the ability for all three people pieces to kind of work together to create a more immersive surround sound bubble. So it's not quite what we would traditionally hear as a 2.1 audio setup, where you have a, a distinct left channel, right channel, and a sub. A few of the other tech specs just out of the way here real quick. There is a microphone built in, so you can take calls on this uh, when you have it connected to a phone. Bluetooth 5.2 also helps incorporate multi-point, so you can have two devices connected to this. Say you wanted to watch a movie on a computer or on a laptop or a tablet, but then if something comes in, you can switch it over immediately to your phone. You've got that kind of immediacy of interaction. Funnily, the top quality audio codec on this is AAC. And knowing that this is a Sony product, I was actually expecting that there'd maybe be an option for LDAC, but that's not included here. The technology at play isn't necessarily the highest possible quality bit rate being sent to the speaker. Sony is making more of a play at surround sound at 360 degree spatial sound mapping. And Bluetooth is the primary connection we're looking at here. There's a little USB-C to charge this unit. And then there's a USB-A port that says play only on the bottom. I've tried connecting this to a couple of other devices and I don't know if I need maybe a special driver or a different Sony app. I've been using and testing this completely under embargo where we haven't gotten all of the up-to-date software for all of the other gadgets out there, just some uh, some early access to an Android app. Yeah, connecting a cable to the USB-A and then plugging a phone in, it's charging the phone, it's slow charging the phone, but I am i can't seem to get any audio playback through this cable. I'll update in the comments below when I know for certain whether or not there will be an audio output, but for so many of our Bluetooth speakers, often you'll get something like an auxiliary port in, like a 3.5 millimeter jack, something like that. There's none of that here. When we're going all Bluetooth and when we have multiple units that are all wirelessly talking to each other, we don't want to have to mess with separate charging solutions as we place these satellites. Sony rates the playback of this entire unit at 
30 hours. So we're talking the entire trio of devices here. I have not come close to testing <laughs> whether or not that's true. I've watched two movies and I've listened to most of an album uh, so far up to this point. And I would say that my experiences so far indicate that their estimate there is accurate if we're listening at a reasonable one person volume level. I'm sure if we're really maxing out what all four drivers are capable of putting out, that 30 hour estimate is going to drop and it's going to drop pretty quick. I am happy to see there is quick charging if you can plug this in for about 10 minutes. Sony estimates that you'll get about two and a half hours of playback, again, at a reasonable volume level, not maxing it all out. And and that does get a little bit precious because there's USB-C on the main housing, but there isn't direct charging available on the satellites. And that's where we're gonna get into some of the description of what this thing is like in operation. We've got the basics, just like any other home or small room Bluetooth speaker, you power it on, you see a little Bluetooth light flash and you connect your phone or your tablet or your laptop, whatever you wanna hook up to it. And then you hear cute little bleeps and bloops. One of the things that I really like about the operation here these charge through coils. There's, there's a direct connection coil that charges each of these speakers. As soon as the main housing detects that one of the satellites has been removed, the entire unit turns on. And now you're ready to place these immediately. It's not a situation where you push power and wait for the Bluetooth to connect and then you pull the satellites and then you place them. I like that organic interaction. If you're pulling these off of the main unit, there's an expectation that you're doing that to listen to some kind of audio. But on these, there is no direct charging to leave these in place. This is not a semi-permanent audio solution for a living room. I almost wonder if at some point Sony might make a little pogo pin charging stand. Say you knew that most of the time you were going to use this, it was gonna be on your uh, bedside night table. You could put like a little stand, pop it right there and have these sort of continuously charging when they're not in active operation. The other thing that makes this conversation a little funny is the idea of taking this out somewhere as a portable music solution. Like say I wanted to travel, I knew I was gonna be spending a couple nights in a hotel and I could leave this at, you know, around my hotel bed for really nice audio. It's not gonna pack well if it's so easy for these to fall off in my suitcase. They're gonna turn on, connect to my phone, that's gonna be a problem. So each of the satellites does have a little power button. So I would recommend packing these sort of together off the main unit. And then when you get to your location, you can set it all up and it looks nice and it looks great. Within that estimate that Sony's put out, they say around a meter to 1.2 or 1.3 meters. And that's a really easy setup to create this audio bubble. The main place that I was testing this was on the queen sized bed in my bedroom. I'm not gonna show you video of my bedroom. My bedroom's kind of trashed. But going out to the end tables and putting this at the foot of the bed, that's a bit that's a bit wider of a bubble than what Sony says is sort of the auto estimate for putting this all together. And I still thought that sounded pretty good. You got a lot of flexibility for moving this around. And then you've got even more customization available when you pair this up with the Sony HEC app for even more control. You can tune these even a little bit better. But my experience is just letting the whole thing run on autopilot were pretty strong. Pop the speakers, push this little sound field button to create that 360 degree bubble. And then the three units are going to talk to each other about managing where they think output needs to go to create that more immersive sound. Winner, as phones get more expensive and the cameras on our phones get better, we're increasingly talking about more specialized photo and video use. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If your camera needs are take phone out of push shutter, put in pocket, you really should not be spending more than a Pixel 8 series. And that includes you iPhone users out there too. There's no reason to spend $900 plus to cover the basics. That's enough of this guy here. Let's, let's just go ahead and quiet him down. It's one of the trickiest things about talking about this product is I don't have a great way to share that experience with you over video. It's really, I wanna put these behind my head and listen to these coming right at me. And that's where this whole thing just totally changes up how I've listened to Bluetooth audio in the past. But I can't really fake a surround sound mix for you to be able to hear that on YouTube. It's a Sony product, so you can tinker more if you want, but I don't really think you have to, as long as you're keeping that bubble 
pretty tight. It's exactly the right amount of space to, to comfortably snuggle up next to someone. From listening with me and my wife, or me, my wife, and my daughter, it was a really fun experience going to something like a medium-sized couch or our queen-sized bed, and getting a pretty fun representation of what we were watching, what we were listening to. Because that's really kind of the critical thing about how this whole system sort of works here. It is a little different than some of those other Bluetooth solutions that I played with in the past, because I've reviewed a couple other options, you know, like, you know, pairing singular Bluetooth speakers to talk to each other to create more of a stereo environment. This is one up-firing speaker and it can talk to another up-firing speaker, and then you kind of have to move these around to get something that's reasonably balanced. It really depends on the Bluetooth system employed. I've used some of those pairing speakers that sync up really well, and I've used some that are really challenging to set up or they're not really uh, intuitive or familiar for getting the two speakers to talk to each other. This was minutes out of the box, connected to a phone, and playing movie audio. It was incredibly simple to set up and get started. But then we talk about the sound quality. And you can listen to the entire setup just sort of contained like this. You've got sort of up channels and then you've got forward facing audio. I don't know that I would buy something like this for a sort of solitary mass of audio. It's not gonna compare to some of those really big like boombox speakers. Something like this is designed to kind of rumble a backyard barbecue. This isn't that. It, it's really well designed and it's well purposed for filling a small bedroom with sound like some of our other Bluetooth solutions, but the killer app really becomes a, a, a specific flavor of audio quality for surround sound, for, for surrounding you in music and film. Actually, that kind of helps for just a second, you know, for some of our larger Bluetooth boom boxes, just so you can see how big this thing really is and how much space it really takes up. It looks like a large home appliance thing, but it's a bit more petite than you think it might be. But I'm really happy to hear in my early listening. So I fired this up with the new Top Gun film because I really like the sound design, the way that it kind of moves around in space. And then of course, one of the things I always love to test is uh, Tron. It's not such a great movie, but it's basically the world's best Daft Punk music video. And I really like the articulation of music and sound design in that too, especially when we're kind of playing with light cycles and stuff like that. This is a really unique listening experience where it creates this fun bubble and it is not a stereo listening experience. One of the things that makes me a little anxious, because I've played with some kind of hyped up solutions that other people have rightfully pointed out that my excitement for something like a, a main speaker unit that then has like fold out panels with electrostatic speakers that can kind of detail and articulate other sound, the majority of what you're gonna hear is coming from this bass unit. And then when we flesh out the rest of this, these are a bit more minimal. I keep this in my office. This is one of my main solutions for syncing up Bluetooth audio here in the Gadget Lab. That's trying to create a more articulate stereo image and it's very directional. This is not trying to do 2.1 audio. You pop these off, you play something, and it's really pushing you into spatial. Sony is incorporating technologies here where it's taking two-channel audio and trying to recreate that spatial bubble. Testing things like that gets really tricky. If something wasn't specifically mixed for spatial processing, I sometimes don't always love how other systems can stretch and reverb and position audio around me. I think Sony does a very good job of this. I think a, a, a number of the premium audio manufacturers have found some good solutions, especially piggybacking off of gaming audio that can move from 2.1 channel to more surround sound audio, but it can sound really artificial if the audio wasn't originally created for that kind of experience. We have tons of films that are mixed in some kind of surround sound, whatever flavor of Dolby or DTS or multiple Blu-ray tracks of, of audio. This has been so much fun to consume that kind of content. The core mission of this is succeeding a little bit better than I was expecting it to. I spend a lot of my life with my ears in headphones and with earbuds in my ear canals. I've had to scale back on some of my audio reviews because I'm constantly going through a cycle of ear infections. I'm trying to find other solutions to kind of have a good time with some audio, especially because I'm a movie junkie. I like watching lots of old movies. Part of that is just the solo singular experience of putting on headphones. And now that is just a, a personal experience for me. That's not something I can share. I'm consuming that audio directly with headphones 
enclosing my ears. I think a lot of us are looking at some of these technologies that are coming out, especially some of these more exotic announcements that we've seen recently, as technology that isolates us. And we're trying to be mindful of how we can share experiences and how we can interact with people. We're a year out of the strictest lockdowns during a global pandemic, and we're trying to open that up. And I think it was really telling as soon as I took this out of the box and I was sort of describing what it was like to my wife. And the first thing she said was, oh, well now when we watch something together, we can kind of snuggle. And that really drove home a point. I know Sony is saying that this is a singular or at best like two people side by side kind of experience, but I think that two people side by side, that tight little bubble of being able to share something with someone is a really important hook to this kind of product. Right now our favorite way to travel is hitting a road trip. So packing something like this in a suitcase that we're gonna throw into the back of our car, this isn't a, a significant amount of technology taking up space in, in a suitcase. One of the things we always travel with is a little noisemaker. So when we're in a hotel room, we can kinda get some white noise happening around us and that is almost two thirds the size of this entire unit. It's basically a fan that doesn't really blow air, but just makes a lot of noise so we can hopefully block out people who might be around us in a hotel. But now we could throw something like this around a hotel room bed and create that sort of noise bubble around us. And we know it's gonna last all night because this thing has awesome battery life. It's really expensive for that use, but it's not just a nighttime noise maker. It does a whole bunch of other things too. And I think we're adopting some of the correct technologies, even if I wanted to see that LDAC, things like Google Fast Pair support, where I turned this on and my OnePlus phone over here on the side said, oh, hey, this thing is available if you wanna connect it. Last point I wanna to touch on, there isn't anything fancy here in terms of gaming. I reached out to the Sony PR folks and I got a little confirmation here. There's no specific low latency mode, but hooking this up to my Steam Deck, I felt there was an appropriate amount of delay on Bluetooth 5.2 and connecting over, basically over SBC for my Steam Deck. You're not gonna wanna use this for anything that heavily depends on immediate audio cues. So if there's something that you hear a sound and you've gotta to react to it, probably not for that. But I was jamming on Tetris Effect, which is more reactive audio, because because the music kind of lines up with your uh, manipulation of your little tetraminos, that was adequately able to kind of keep up with my gameplay where I can play Tetris Effect pretty quick. You want to hear those audio cues as pieces snap into place and the music kind of changes around you. I felt we were in a good envelope of performance there. I'm trying to bring all this home and I've only had a couple days to really dive into it, to really test it out. I really like this initial experience. The price point on this it's gonna be a bit high for some folks out there. Sony is uh, setting the MSRP at $499.99. Sony is positioning this as a premium audio utility, a premium audio experience. There is some aggressive tech demoed on this hardware. And I think that kind of narrows us in. I think that kind of specifies a certain kind of consumer who's going to be interested in this experience. Obviously, we can point to some Bluetooth audio that's gonna just pump out some big fat bass in a stereo sound set at a much lower price point. Sony would not be Sony if they weren't looking for a more discerning audio consumer. And this is definitely kind of pointing people over in that direction. Like a lot of my gadget conversations, and especially when we talk about Sony products, Sony phones, Sony headphones, Sony cameras, it's not a win, lose, buy or don't buy kind of recommendation style. The nuance on this matters quite a bit. Do you want to create a spatial audio bubble anywhere you might be able to sit down and listen to music or, or watch a movie and organically interact with this setup easily without having to place speakers permanently? I think there's a lot of value at this price point for that kind of consumer. You just have to know that's something you wanna take for a spin. I think it's a little bit challenging to nail down exactly who's gonna be a good fit for this because we really haven't seen a whole lot like this before. Daisy chaining Bluetooth speakers is not what this thing is doing. Permanently mounting a sound bar and satellite speakers to your TV is not what this is doing. The AX7 is a little different, but different is exciting when it's doing something I don't think I've seen anything else do before. Again, a major thank you to Sony for sending this my way. I'm really trying to think about some other ways that we might be able to use this, so don't be shy. Drop me some comments underneath this video. Where would you want to see something like this tried?
maybe there is an outdoor option for spatial audio, or maybe it's not just bedroom or hotel room. Try and stump me on it, and we'll maybe do a follow-up video taking this out to other places. If I get some really good comments, I'll do like a little mashup video or maybe some shorts talking about testing this in other areas. I think this is a unique enough product. I really want to spend some more time with it. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely amazing. Uh, those of you who are catching my home site, somegadgetguy.com, maybe you're shopping a little merch or you're sharing these videos here on YouTube or you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of audio and tech nerds in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy all over the place. I'm producing my podcast on Twitch. I'm sharing photos more frequently on the Flickr. And uh, you know, I'm really mixing it up with the folks over on Mastodon. I've really enjoyed that experience, but a little less so these days on the Facebooks and the Instagrams on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next review.